Hello, Biology 1620. This is a bonus video about the diversity of viruses. These slides were at the end of my microbial diversity lecture, my diversity of bacteria and archaea, that I didn't have time for. And um, I figured that many of you would still like to hear about it because viruses are very much on our minds these days. And people often ask me questions about these things. So, so here you go. Uh, so viruses are very diverse, is the main point of these uh, slides. Um, the things that we can say are true for all viruses are, are very uh, few. We can say that all viruses are infectious. They contain some kind of nucleic acid that's enclosed in a protein coat. Um, but otherwise, their genomes can either be linear or circular. Their genomes can be made out of DNA or RNA. The DNA can be double-stranded or single-stranded. Um, you may have never even thought about single-stranded DNA before. The RNA could be single-stranded or double-stranded. You maybe didn't know the RNA could even be double-stranded, but some viruses have double-stranded RNA genomes. Um, some viruses are small, some are large. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, some viruses are specialized for a single host species, and some viruses can hop between species, as we all know. Um, here's a cool figure that I like to use as a broad overview of the different kinds of viruses. It has a lot of information in it, so it's very busy, but I'm not going to quiz you on this, so let's just enjoy the complexity here. So uh, here are um, three different kinds of RNA viruses. You've got... Um, single-strand and double-stranded RNA viruses. The single-strand RNA viruses can either be the positive strand or the negative strand, so um, uh, there, are, there are two different strands, and there are viruses that have uh, genomes in, in both of the different strands. The coronaviruses are um, positive-strand RNA viruses, so their genomes are a single-strand RNA genome. Um, the, the common cold viruses of the rhinoviruses are also in this group. Uh, the flu virus, influenza, is also a single-stranded RNA virus, but it has the opposite strand. So it has the complementary uh, strand. It has the negative strand. And these, these differences are, as you can see, in these um, molecular mechanisms that are summarized with all these arrows, which I'm not going to get into. Um, which strand of RNA it is does uh, affect how it translates its RNA into proteins inside the host, and therefore makes a difference um, if you want to treat it or vaccinate against it. Right? So the influenza viruses, also RNA viruses, the Ebola viruses, also single-stranded RNA viruses. Uh, HIV is a famous retrovirus, which is that it has an RNA genome, but it converts the RNA into DNA inside the host, which can make it very difficult to treat. Um, the hepatitis B virus is a, a different kind of retrovirus. Um, you may have heard of parvoviruses, especially if you're um, if your pet. Uh, has, has contracted a parvovirus. Those are DNA viruses, but it's they have a single-stranded DNA genome, um, which is pretty wild. And then a lot of other viruses are kind of the classic so-called normal double-stranded DNA viruses. And this figure also illustrates which kinds of organisms each group of viruses infects. So the coronaviruses, for example, infect all kinds of organisms, plants, bacteria, uh, unicellular eukaryotes, metazoans, um, in other words, animals. Some viruses um, only infect uh, a few kinds of organisms, but in general, most of these groups of viruses infect multiple kinds of organisms. Um, so this is just a long way of saying that viruses are very diverse. There are very few, if any, things that are common among all of these viruses, which means there's no such thing as antibiotics for viruses. So antibiotics themselves are specific to bacteria, so you can't use them on viruses, but there's no analogous antiviral compound that works well against all viruses, the way that some antibiotics work well <clears throat> against all bacteria, because they don't share any common properties, so you can't possibly treat them all with the same drug. Um, also, this means that um, viruses are not monophyletic. We don't know that all viruses are derived from a common ancestor, so they may have many different origins. So that's a, a phylogenetic explanation for why um, designing vaccines and antiviral compounds um, is a big challenge.
So a little more on viral diversity. Um, I was focusing on their genomes before. They also come in many different shapes and sizes. They come in long rods, they come in spheres, they come in geometric shapes, they come in these moonlander um, uh, uh, machine-like uh, structures. Um, these are bacterial and archaeoviruses. Some bacterial viruses have these long filaments. Um, the archaeoviruses are especially weird. You got these lemon-shaped uh, viruses. You got these uh, champagne bottles with antennae, um, super long filaments, uh, these uh, nice geometrically shaped viruses. So lots and lots of different um, shapes. Um, there are different sizes of viruses. Um, there are giant viruses that are as big as, um, or even bigger than many bacteria in archaea that in, um, tend to infect um, amoeba and other microbial eukaryotes like that. These giant viruses also have giant genomes for viruses. So some of these giant viruses have thousands of genes, which is more than some parasitic bacteria and archaea, right? So you can't even say that all viruses are small or all viruses have small genomes because of these giant viruses. There's a really cool uh, Radiolab podcast episode about the giant viruses that I highly recommend if you want to learn more about them. Um, and so it's possible that this word virus that we use um, means lots of different things. We don't know. In fact, it's pretty likely that viruses do not have a common ancestor, as I said. And that means that viruses may have evolved multiple times. Um, uh, and I, I already said everything else on the slide. Um, so let's talk more about the phylogeny. Where should we place viruses on the tree of life? And um, uh, there are three different um, ideas for where viruses came from. Um, first is the, the virus first hypothesis, which is that viruses are um, ancient and maybe even all life on the planet evolved from a virus, uh, which has an intuitive feel because viruses are simple. They're basically simple replicating particles and um, the first life forms must have been simple replicating particles. Um, so, th so that has some appeal. Uh, I think it has some problems with it as well. Um, another idea is that viruses are so-called devolved, which is not really a biological term, but the idea is that they, they are um, descendants of cells, um, archaea or bacteria or, or eukarya, that um, um, evolved into a species that became a parasite and many, many rounds of selection focusing on the parasitic characteristics uh, created uh, something that is no longer recognizable as archaea, bacteria, or eukarya, and is now a virus. That's basically a super parasite. That's another idea. And the third one is related to the second one, but it's um, focusing on the idea that maybe viruses are a component of a cell rather than an actual speciation event or speciation events. The third idea is that it's just a component of a cell. So some bits of DNA and protein, for example, that uh, escaped from a host cell and went off and became uh, um, uh, independent, at least in as much that viruses are independent and capable of infecting other cells. So this third idea is really popular right now because there's some good molecular evidence that at least some viruses um, are basically selfish genes that have hopped out of genomes and become uh, able to replicate uh, not on their own because they still need hosts to replicate for them, right? But they have their own uh, evolutionary lineages um, as basically escaped genes. Um, but it's important to realize that there are many, many different kinds of viruses and they are not monophyletic as far as we know. And so each of these potential explanations could be true for different viruses. And um, even though we talk about all these viruses as, as, as viruses using that one word, in reality, they're probably lots of different things. And those lots of different things could have different origins. And so each of these explanations could explain different kinds of viruses. So here's a question that you can use to quiz yourself on what I talked about today. I'll leave that as an exercise for yourself. If you have any questions about this material, send me an email and let's, we can talk about it more. All right, bye-bye.